Okay, I've never seen a video on how to take one of these apart. Uh, it's very, very easy to take apart these Fox floats. They're very easy to repair, um, not a whole lot to them. I did have to buy a special tool, uh, ordered this, uh, $45, $50. Um, I made my own IFP tool, the internal floating piston. I took a tie rod end and I made my own tool uh, to get in there to push it up and down to set the IFP height. Um, I ordered the kits online to rebuild them. It's like $50 for two kits. Um, what I've done here is I've taken the cap nozzle or the nozzles off here. I already took the one off the bottom here and I took the eyelets out so that I could tie it in the vise uh, and the shield off. Otherwise this is Exactly, it still has air pressure um, in it. It's still charged. What I'm gonna do first is let all the air pressure out of this shock. I can do that. I have a Schrader tool um, and just let it out. You hear the air come out of here. And I'll unscrew this one, it's just faster. You can see the shock uh, go down a little bit. And just put all my stuff right there, all organized. Take this one out. So now this shock is unpressurized here, but there's a Schrader valve in the bottom of this one and it still has pressure. I'm gonna leave that for right now because the first thing I'm gonna do is take this uh, evil chamber off um, and remove it. Uh, to do that, I just have a 26 millimeter on this big nut up top here. Um, I found taking it off this way with a 3 8 impact is the uh, best way comes off easily. Um, I'll just stick it on here. Uh, if you noticed when I did that, it actually unscrewed it here before it removed here. Um, every other method I tried, it always unscrews just the top and not the bottom. So this kind of does it. Um, there, that's that says just two pieces with one aluminum piston with an O-ring. If uh, you have it leaking between these two, um, your pressure, there's literally one 10 cent O-ring right there. You don't even have to discharge the shock. You could actually fix your shock with that O-ring with a O-ring from Home Depot in 10 minutes without having to send your shocks out to get repaired. Uh, so that's a nifty little trick. So that's that, it just comes right apart, goes right back together. Um, this is the cap. We're just gonna put that to the side right now. Uh, next, after I take that off, I like to loosen the um, sleeve here. Sometimes I, uh, I have an old belt um, to use and some vice grips. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, depending on the shock or how tight the person uh, before who rebuilt it or put it together. They're not supposed to be super tight but sometimes they are. I just put this, put it up tight to the shock body, vice grip it, and then you can just use the belt as a, yeah, and see this one is really tight. So when they're that tight, I do it a little different. I take an old, uh, this was like a bath mat, it's rubber on the back. Turn it like this, and put it in the vise. Now my vise clamps are set up where they're, they're aluminum, but they uh, have a groove to grab a piece of pipe. I don't over tighten this, I just squeeze it enough, and then all I need is something to spin it. So I use, just an adjustable wrench. Um, put it on this way. And then all I gotta do, oh, it's spinning, need a little bit more. Sometimes they're stubborn. So, let me uh, roll this back a little. All right. Yep, just 
little bang. It came my time. Edit that fight out that I just had with it. So, now the air sleeve's loose. Put it back in here. Now this unscrews. Now you're not unscrewing the top, you're only unscrewing the air sleeve. So, see how it slides up? And that's it. That's where all your air pressure is stored, between here and here. And you can see there's gunk and garbage and there's a bunch of shock oil in here. So after, either, either when they put it back together, oh, and the, the bumper is destroyed. So I'll have to find a bumper. Uh, probably have to order one of those. But um, clearly this shock is damaged in some way. So we're going to find out when we pull it apart what that might be. Let me knock out some of this garbage. Okay, so the bumper's out. Next, we put it in this way. Now, to start, when you do bleed these, which is the last, one of the last things you'll do, you have to have the low speed compression backed all the way out. So, I'll do that now. So, it's backed out all the way. So this is ready. Now we can, uh, this is under a lot of pressure. Uh, in fact, show you I actually want to see what these shocks were set at and to do that I can hook my pressure gauge up Let's this one only has 165 in it, which seems a little low, but we're going to let the air pressure out. Shaft drops down. So, that is now empty. There's no pressure in here. You can use a regular screwdriver or anything to let the pressure out. Uh, I just did this because I wanted to verify the starting pressure. Now you push down this cap and it'll release the, uh, there's a clip inside. You just push it down. Got it that time. A little tricky, got in behind it, popped it out. Might be an easier way. Maybe someone could leave it in the comments, but I don't usually fight with them as much. They usually come right out. This is just your uh, reservoir cap. Um, looks good. Just needs to be cleaned. Um, inside here is your IFP, your internal floating piston. Um, it's just sitting in the oil. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, now that there's no pressure on the shock and it isn't going to explode and kill me, is take this apart. Um, this is actually the, this is the seal that seals against your air sleeve. So if your shocks are bleeding down, it's this seal that's causing it to bleed down. Um, unfortunately, you have to take apart quite a bit of the shock to get there. Uh, I have thought about stretching one over to put it on, but you know, that'd be only in an emergency and, uh, you better have a spare one if that fails. But, uh, what I'm going to start doing for servicing is uh, there's this blue fox oil that you'll see come out of this upper seal. It goes in between this sleeve and this uh, piston. I'm actually going to start taking these apart and filling them with oil uh, as maintenance. I can flip them over. I could quickly just take a syringe, put two to three cc's in here, and keep this thing lubricated. It's going to make it last twice as long. The seals last twice as long instead of it going dry after some riding, a couple hours of riding, and then having to replace this seal. You can keep it lubricated 
uh, it's pretty straightforward and if this isn't over tightened if your air sleeve isn't over tightened like this one was uh, it should come apart fairly easy so that you could um, so now we got to pull this uh, uh, piston out I got the special tool um, these there we go I just unscrew it now there's no pressure on this because we already removed this reservoir. So just unscrews after that. Let's see what we got. I'm slowly pulling it out so I don't wear all the uh, oil that's in here. Um, this one is tight right now. I'm pulling it. So. Definitely has good seal in here because it's uh, you're pulling against the IFP to get this out. There we go. Well. And we have some broken parts in this one. So here's your valving and your uh, bottom out spring and um, you know your valve shims that people talk about when they revalve a shock. This has one of the uh, Pro GNCC riders valving. Um, it's unique because these stop washers, there's three stop washers on this shock. You know, they must have, they retracted back in the head. Uh, there's three there, and there's two of these spacer washers, which need to be replaced. Um, and then you can tell because the factory um, shim stack is similar to this on top, but on the bottom, there's literally only one or two shims. You can't tell in this video, but there's probably 15 shims on the bottom. So that's how you know it's um, the pro valving. Now... Now that I got that done, I'm gonna pull the uh, the IFP with my tool I made. Uh, like I said, I made it out of a tie rod end. Just hook it in there, slowly pull it up. This stops it from squirting oil everywhere. So, let's see. All right. This is your internal floating piston. This is the bleeder. Um, it's an Allen, uh, it is a SAE thread, it's regular, it's not metric. Um, it is a eighth inch um, SAE. You uh, take this out and there's O-ring behind it, that's how you bleed it when you put it back in. We'll do a video on that. Um, but that's that O-ring and a band, piston band. Now the whole shock is open and that's it, it's completely apart. The only other thing we need to do is take off our air sleeve. Uh, this is the air sleeve. This one, I've had quite a few damaged ones lately. This one actually does not look damaged. I will clean it again and check it. This uh, shock is getting um, converted to Kajima coated because the other air sleeve for its other shock was damaged, it had a dent in it. Um, so this one will actually get you know, it'll get replaced anyway. This will just be a spare. But um, that's that. That's the air. So uh, here is. I'm looking for my. Um, you can pour it in here. It makes kind of a mess, uh, you know, doing it because when you pour it over, it tries to, you know, it's you're pouring it out of both sides. So just watch when you pour it where you uh, make sure that you don't pour it all over the floor. This stuff stinks and is nasty. Um, it's about 10 ounces of fluid. Uh, when I refill, I only use eight to start. Um, and then I top off from there. Just makes less of a mess in the end. 
Okay, that's it. That's the shock body. Um, you can take these out. Uh, I don't. Um, typically, they're not a failure point, so when it's in there, it's fine. Uh, I don't take the uh, sleeve here off on any of them. Again, it's not a common failure point. I've never had an issue there. I guess if you were, you would need to unscrew this. Um, I do need to switch this um, reservoir to the Kajima coated one. So I'm going to put it in here and see if I can do it with the belt and show you uh, how that works. I'm trying to think how I want to clamp it. Stuff stinks. Okay. Let's try this thing with the, the vice grip and the... Trying to do this backwards so you guys can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, this may or may not work. The last one, it did work this way, but on the... Uh, Sometimes I gotta clamp it. Let's see. Nope, this one's tight. You gotta watch it. The belt will, or these straps will tear your stickers up. If you don't plan on replacing them, um, you might wanna. I, invest in a really good pair of the rubber pliers i have not been able to find a set that grabs when people over tighten these things they're just so tight um they do not want to come apart so we're gonna try to try to hammer this out make it like an impact wrench let's see There it goes. Sharp taps, it's like using an impact wrench. It just gives it a little shock. Um, doesn't mar it up, doesn't do anything to it. These are, you know, probably 71 or uh, 7,000 series, so they're very, very strong. And there you go, it just unscrews off. And that's it. I replaced this O-ring here. Um, when I do it, now obviously with a regular rebuild, there's no reason to remove the reservoir. Um, the only reason this reservoir is getting removed is to switch it to a Kajima coated reservoir. Um, really, um, you know, for your regular rebuild, you don't even, you know, you'll never be back to this far into the shock. Uh, and that's it. That's, uh, that's how to take apart a Fox float. Uh, really simple. Um, putting it back together is also very simple. There's just a couple things you have to do in order on these shocks um, Because if you forget to put the air sleeve on or you do something in a different order You have to take it all back apart and do it over again uh, We'll do that again. We'll do that in a separate video